Okay, let me get the mic here. Um, I have an update for uh, the new weighted batch processing script. If you are a one-shot color uh, camera user, um, then let's take a look at it. Okay, welcome back. This is a follow-up on uh, the video I did yesterday on the new weighted batch processing script. And I was using um, a monochrome uh, data set with uh, LRGB. And um, I was uh, ecstatic uh, over the built-in uh, uh, image uh, drizzle integration. And um, I assumed that that would be going on with both... Uh, the one-shot color camera and the uh, uh, as well as mono and I assumed wrong so uh, but there's a however to it so let's let's take a look at what the however is uh, let's go over to the light frames and uh, this is the sombrero galaxy and I took 35 with an ASI 533 on a Newtonian and uh, they were 180 second long and I I don't know I, I usually like to put my filter in there and uh, and I don't know what I put in but I, I know I had an uh, well I don't know what I did so I, I it, it may be filterless but uh, it's unusual that I would do that but let's say I did it's it's irrelevant to this anyway so um, I decided because uh, I wanted to run this uh, because I had never processed this data set before. And I thought, well, that'd be a good time to see how the, uh, the script works with the one shot color camera. If there's anything that pops up in a pop up or something that I wouldn't have seen with the mono is, am I missing anything? And so um, I was, I was missing a bunch. Well, it's important to me. This time, uh, so I would have it run quicker, I, I didn't uh, select a linear defects correction. And uh, so I left that alone. And that saved uh, a, a couple hours of, of uh, processing time on the weighted batch processing script. And uh, I also didn't check isometric solution. And, um, and I did that because I was... I anticipated I'd have a problem when I take the RGB in image and I split it into to the red, green, and the blue. And I was right. I tried it both ways and it couldn't plate solve. So I unchecked it and it may be it was just that data set. But uh, I got a pop-up box in the middle of the process and it was asking me to change my parameters so it would try again to uh, perform a plate solve, which is the uh, astrometric solution. Uh, that's their way of, of uh, probably a more scientific uh, approach or name for plate solving. That's what it is. And uh, and I also didn't. I did check the interactive mode. I just wanted to see if I would be able to understand what they were asking for, and I didn't. So. Uh, uh, Everyone needs to try that, and I just unchecked that, and I went back to using the uh, uh, let Pix Insight uh, pick the best reference frames. I tried several different ones, and it wouldn't work. So uh, when I used interactive mode, and uh, partly is I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm reaching out to Adam Block to, to to do something on this to help enlighten us slow learners and uh, non-intuitive and non-scientific well i'm talking about me i don't know about you but um, i was lost when i was looking at it i had an idea of what they wanted and i tried different things but i was just hunting and pecking that's not why i made this video why i'm making this video is because of drizzle inter integration uh, if i go over to post uh, calibration and i select separate the rgb into r g and b and uh, and don't select recombine, then drizzle integration gets grayed out. 
if uh, if I uh, uh, have combined RGB, then I have the opportunity to drizzle uh, my images. But I get an RGB image, not an R and a G and a B mono image, and that's what I want. So uh, my plan with my one-shot color cameras going forward is going to be to uh, have a separate R, G, and B mono. And uh, under, let's see, under um, let's go to is it under nope? It's only going to be in calibration. And then when you check on your uh, your light frame tab, and uh, you come over here to pick your color filter array, and I pick RGGB instead of VNG, I'm going to pick the uh, super pixel. And there's a huge difference uh, under the VNG, the uh, effort on the part of the algorithm is to use the bare metrics for every pixel uh, on your sensor. And whether it's the right color or not, it's going to interpolate and it's going to populate uh, every receptor on your sensor with a color that it thinks is right. And that's what VNG does. It is, an, it is a sophisticated algorithm that's interpolating color to fill your sensor. And it could be filling it with absolute accurate color rendition. Or it could be making a boo-boo. Under SuperPixel, you're going to get a smaller file. But what you see is what you get. If red's coming in, you get red. There is no interpolation, and the file is much smaller, as you can see when you do it both ways and you make a comparison. So I want the correct color, not an interpolated color, and I want to separate my images out into R, G, and B and bring them back in, and the value of having done that is that my stars no longer have on one side of the star a green color cast and on the other side a red color cast that takes place because of light dispersion. So now when I put these together I've got a white star with little or no uh, color casting uh, from, from, from poor uh, well, from pollution and light dispersion. So I think it's a good thing, but if we go back to post calibration, we're stuck and we're not being able to drizzle this. Now it's okay with an 800 millimeter newt and an ASI 533 because that combination uh, isn't either under or oversampled. It's at the sweet spot. But what if I was running my uh, real wide field stellar view uh, 70T? Well, I need to drizzle. So you have to go back to the old way. And if you do, you can. So in this case, I'm going to uh, exit from this. And I now have a blue, red, and a green image that are not drizzled. And uh, I, di I didn't, I, I took this some time ago, didn't process the data. And I know why I never took flats. So I, I went and got some flats from the prior session and uh, and they're terrible. And as you can see, uh, they even added to the uh, misery rather than help to remove the misery. But at any rate, that's not important. The important thing is this is my non-drizzled image right here. So can you still drizzle? Yes, but you have to go back and bring up drizzle integration you got to go add files and you've got to head to this was May. Here we go to we got to go to to uh, pics and registered and click on each of your individuals now and pull up your uh, 
drizzled frames. So you can still do it. And I see what's happening. Pix Insight's new ability to perform drizzle integration uh, is, is as good as it can be until you separate these images. And then it's not possible yet in there. It, it, well, it may be possible, but they have chosen not to integrate, drizzle integrate at that point. So if you have a one-shot color camera, if you choose to separate your images to R, G, and B, I recommend that, then do two things. Drizzle like the old way and dither. Dither, drizzle, dither, drizzle with your one-shot color cameras, regardless of whether you're over or undersampled or in the sweet spot. And you can still do it. And just drag and drop. No, you don't. That's the process. Just run it, and you're off and running again, and you'll have a drizzled image. So that's it. It's just kind of a correction to where we were yesterday. If you have a one-shot color camera and you choose to separate your RGB, uh, you will not be delivered drizzled images. Your images will be uh, undrizzled, and in order to do that, you're going to have to uh, go back to your drizzle integration icon. I was all ready to delete this. And I call that premature drizzle integration icon removal. Don't do that. There is no need to have premature drizzle integration removal. Uh, keep it there because if you're a one-shot color camera user and you separate your images RGB because you want to get rid of color on the edges, then this is what you need to do. So yay, super pixel, boo, V and G. Yay, Pix Insight for coming up with yet again another awesome uh, improvement to this script. Have a great rest of the day. Catch you later and hope this clears up uh, some of the mess I started yesterday.